In an isolated cabin in the woods of British Columbia, Canada, I was far from the epicenter of change in the summer of 89. Inundated with news via satellite TV of mass exodus from East Germany through Hungary and Czechoslovakia, friends asked me why I wasn't in Germany at such a significant moment in history. On November 2nd, I flew back to Berlin, catapulted to the summer winter city, the splendor of nature instantly relegated to memory. But chop, I can use sleep at night. Did you ever imagine it would happen so fast? Or did you have a foresight? Fast, fast, so fast. The East-West Equation. Armaments stockpiling to prevent one from wiping out the other. Forty years of ideology splinters in a few months. And one of those that died trying to escape? And those who suffered complying with restrictions? And those who sat in prison for daring to speak their minds? And always the taunting ideals of the West looming on the other side. Was it just a bad joke, or are we suffering from amnesia? The artificiality of politics. A half a million people demonstrate for reform and democracy at Alexanderplatz in East Berlin. I watch the spectacle in live broadcasts on both East and West television. It is clear. There is no turning back. The power of the media spreads like a virus out of control. The system of repression must end. The demonstrators call for the government to step down. Incredulous, I listen to speeches that only weeks before would have been considered subversive and made one an enemy of the state. Seven thirty p.m. In the subway on my way to a Faith No More concert, people start shouting, "The wall is big. The wall is gone. gone." A euphoric mania takes over. East Berliners storm over the borders as exuberant West Berliners rush to the east. Media from around the world suddenly turns its attention to Berlin. The image of people dancing on the wall is imprinted in history. This wall, this concrete symbol of separation, is suddenly not necessary, an artifact of the past. Wonderful yet absurd. The wall came down as quickly as it went up. Is it a coincidence that November 9th is the same date as Crystal Night in 1938? The fateful evening when stores owned by Jews were vandalized and destroyed by fascists across Germany? I wonder. Allies at one time became enemies through the strategies of rivalry politics, through mistrust. Whose means of destruction was more effective? Barriers obstructing the exchange of information increased anxiety. Propaganda's insidious effects prospered. Red fever, yellow fever, red, white and blue fever. Imposed social structure or laissez-faire. Differences in theory in man's belief what is best for man. Free choice, few options. Self-determination, corruption. Theories and practicality collapse. Ideals disintegrate in the hands of individuals under pressure of bureaucracy and economics. Now the divided city is whole again. Talk of German reunification is already an open forum. 
Does this concept not imply that one government must secede? Nationalism reigns. The Allies feel uncomfortable. Forty members of the East German government have already stepped down or been arrested. Examples of abusers of power must be made. Would this happen in the West? I wonder. The events of November are spectacular, yet another reminder of humanity's inanities. We make enemies of each other, only to discover it wasn't necessary. We kiss and make up, together at long last. West Germany offers 100 marks greeting money to every East German visitor. Yet after the 100 marks is spent, their money is worth nothing. Consumerism runs rampant. Profits soar, the funds returning to the initiators. Ghetto blasters, jeans, electronic goods, porn magazines, kilometer queues at the bank, crowded subways, lineups at the department stores, confusion. Traffic jams, smog warnings, flights, trains and buses booked up. Chaos. Overnight Berlin is a real metropolis. Rules subside, everything operates longer. But the comfort of the West is disrupted, and they are indignant. Is this the meaning of freedom? We have to take taxis to get anywhere, the West Berliners complain. In the East, one is accustomed to lineups. Here we are not. Capitalism is no example of perfection, but the conception of socialism is tarnished. Struggling to redefine itself in the face of mass speculation, socialism enters into the discourse of money. Modernization, technology, trade, ecology, the West appears generous. A whole new market awaits. Lost in superficialities, bananas become the symbol of capitalism and exoticism. The marketing of freedom of symbols of concrete. An American company offers 50 million to buy the entire Berlin Wall. Everyone is hammering, chiseling, chipping. Get your own souvenir pet rock of history. Only 10 bucks with a stamp of authenticity on the back. Maybe I'll fill my suitcase with cement and rush to America. The British Museum got a big chunk. Why not me? Strange how this infamous monument of international public art, this physical iron curtain, is splintered into pieces for coffee table display. Promotion profiteering flourishes. Media coverage is relentless. Crosby steals a Nash, Joe Cocker, Leonard Bernstein, do concerts near the wall. Instant audience achieved. Daily reports of new border openings are broadcasted. Idealized terminology is sorely abused. Democracy. They called it the November Revolution. Amen. Celebrity anchor men from almost every nation were broadcasting live for hours in front of the Brandenburger Gate. Mm -hmm. All the world could see the history in the making live. Yeah. Ironically, a subsequent TV survey concluded that most viewers changed the channel after five minutes. History brought the ratings down. Like Media has given us the illusion of global consciousness, yeah. a sense of synchronicity with the events happening around the world. But what ideology produces these global pictures? Have Neutrality you. is a non-entity. Yeah. History makes me suspicious. Who will be the next enemy? Repent, brother. Amen. Oh, the whole world is over, but only because capitalism has banned I'm not looking for any conflict over there. I'm not going to change my position any. But uh, let's see how those negotiations come out, and we'll be start discussing that.